Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a show where we will provide you fresh insights into South Asia's geopolitical, strategic and security situation. Let's take a look at the headlines first. China blocks India's and US bid to blacklist 2611 planner Sajid Mir. Pakistan's nefarious Khalistan scheme turns deadlier as two killed after reports of rivalry and implosion. And US says Taliban treatment of women could be gender apartheid. Let's begin the show. China has blocked a proposal by India and the US to designate top Pakistan-based terrorist Sajid Mir as an international terrorist. Mir is India's most wanted terrorist and the main handler of the 2611 Mumbai terror attacks. Beijing has blocked the motion on the Lashkar chief commander's UN terror designation after Islamabad detained and sentenced him for 15 years under terror financing charges last year in June. So, where you look at the woman, the person is going to fight, the person is going to fight, the person is going to fight. Do you know what's going on here? China has constantly defended its client state Pakistan in the United Nations. The country, being the close ally of Islamabad, has always created hurdles for listing known Pakistani terrorists. Recently, Beijing blocked a motion by India and the US to designate Pakistan terrorist Sajid Mir as the global terrorist under the 1,267 Al-Qaeda Sanctions Committee for the second time. In September last year, China had put on hold a similar proposal against Mir at the UN. Mir is India's most wanted terrorist and the main handler of the 2611 Mumbai terror attacks which shook the entire world. China has blocked the proposal on the Lashkar chief commander's UN terror designation after Islamabad detained and sentenced him for 15 years under terror financing charges last year. And as usual, India has given a befitting reply to Beijing. It has slammed China's refusal to list the LAT terrorist. In a sharply worded statement, Prakash Gupta, Joint Secretary at India's permanent mission in New York, asserted that if efforts to ban terrorists fail because of petty geopolitical interests, then the UN lacks the actual political will to combat the threat of terrorism. He was listed as a proscribed terrorist under the national laws of India. He was proscribed under the laws of the United States, this host country, and of several other countries globally, many of whose nationals lost their lives. But when the proposal for listing him did not go through the Security Council sanctions regime, we had strong reasons to believe that something was genuinely wrong in the global sanctions regime, as manifested in the Security Council. If we cannot get established terrorists who have been proscribed across global landscapes listed under the Security Council architecture for pure geopolitical interests, then we really do not have the genuine political will needed to sincerely fight this challenge of terrorism. China, going on by past pattern, defends its actions as so-called technical objections based on procedural loopholes. However, it is an open secret that they have a clear pattern of protecting Pakistan internationally. Last year in June, India and the US jointly proposed the listing of Abdul Rahman Makki, a close aide and brother-in-law of LET founder Hafiz Saeed at the UN Security Council. Both countries had already declared Makki as a terrorist under domestic laws and the US has offered a bounty of $2 million for him. But China blocked India's move at the UN Security Council to shield Makki as a global terrorist by placing a technical hold on the proposal. China, to protect their favorite colony Pakistan, has always kept doing this. It did the same thing with jaish e Muhammad chief Masood Azhar. New Delhi proposed sanctioning Masood Azhar in the year 2009, but it finally happened almost 10 years later in 2019. And during this time, Beijing kept blocking India's proposal. It delayed it as much as possible. And now China is doing this all over again, 
दिस टाइम विद साजिद मीर चाइना हैज बीन रिपीटेडली शील्डिंग पाकिस्तान स्पेशली पाकिस्तान बैक्ट टेररिस्ट फ्रॉम बींग लिस्टेड एज अ ग्लोबल टेररिस्ट वॉट इज न्यू इन दिस केस इज दैट दिस वॉज अ प्रपोजल दैट वॉज बेसिकली मूव बाई द यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स ऑन द एविडेंस दैट द एफ बी आई हैड द यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स मूव दिस प्रपोजल विच वॉज ऑफकोर्स बैक्ड बाई इंडिया एंड इट इज अ यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स प्रपोजल दैट चाइना बेसिकली हैज स्ट्रक डाउन नो देर आर सेवरल थिंग्स आउट यर राइट नाउ यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स हैज टेकन अ पर्टिकुलर स्टांस ऑन ताइवान विच चाइना डज नॉट लाइक बट दिस इज एंटायरली इनकन्सिस्टेंट विद चाइना स्टैंड दैट इट यूजेज पाकिस्तान एज इट्स प्रॉक्सी वेन इट कम्स टू डिसबैलेंसिंग इंडिया एंड इंडीड यूजिंग टेररिज्म एज अ टूल टू डिसबैलेंस डेमोक्रेसीज बी इट इंडिया बी इट वेस्टर्न यूरोप बी इट द यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स China has been almost constant in its diplomatic backing for Pakistan at the United Nations. Pakistan has likewise given up its power and region in order to display its loyalty to Beijing. However, it appears that Pakistan and China's partnership is primarily motivated by a desire to disrupt their common rival India. While Beijing tries to counter India by inflaming tensions in the region, Pakistan and its intelligence agency the ISI propagate falsehoods against New Delhi. Pakistan continues to repeat its own faulty narrative about Kashmir in order to shift attention away from the reality in their country and their own actions. Blinded by Chinese promises of economic success and friendship, Pakistan's current administration is squandering its chances of ever becoming independent. Pakistan can continue to disregard its people's needs. India is going to continue prospering and will strive to keep Pakistan and China accountable on a global scale. Women in Afghanistan have been facing numerous challenges since the Taliban returned to power in 2021. Girls and women in the war-torn country have no access to education, employment and public spaces. Not only that, the de facto authorities are dictating what women must wear, how they should travel, workplace segregation and even what kind of cell phones women should have. Taliban's treatment of Afghan women could amount to crime against humanity. That's according to a new UN report presented at the Human Rights Council in Geneva. A report. When the Taliban took back control of Afghanistan in August 2021, there was a brief hope they would allow more freedoms for women compared to their brutal austere rule of the 1990s. However, ever since the seized power in the war-torn country, the group has been clamping down on women's rights by barring them access to education and public spaces. Recently, United Nations asserted that the treatment of afghan women may amount to gender apartheid as their rights continue to be gravely infringed by the country's de facto authorities the un defines gender apartheid as economic social and sexual discrimination against individuals based on their gender or sex we have Uh, more specifically outlined issues of uh, gender persecution in the report uh, and we have pointed to the need uh, for more exploration of uh, gender apartheid which is not uh, currently um uh, an international crime um but could become so and we have noted that it appears if uh, one applies the definition of apartheid which at the moment is is for race um uh to the situation in Afghanistan and use uh, sex instead of race uh then uh, there seem to be strong indications uh pointing towards that The Taliban claimed under its rule this time women would be accorded every right within the confines of Sharia law However in the months that have followed the de facto rulers have imposed harsh restrictions on women's education and their access to employment In April, Taliban authorities began enforcing a ban on Afghan women working for the UN after stopping women from working for aid groups in December. 
Taliban restrictions in Afghanistan, especially the bans on education and NGO work, have drawn fierce international condemnation. However, the Taliban have shown no signs of backing down. In May, reports were released by Amnesty International and the International Commission of Jurists (ICJ) in which they emphasized how the Taliban's repression of Afghan women's rights, along with imprisonment, enforced disappearance, torture, and other ill treatment, could qualify as gender persecution under the International Criminal Court. Furthermore, a recent analysis by the UN Children's Fund (UNICEF) found that prohibiting girls from attending high school also has a financial cost, costing the nation 2.5% of its annual GDP. According to UNICEF, if the 3 million girls in the current cohort finished secondary school and entered the workforce, the Afghan economy would grow at least by 5.4 billion US dollars. However, it appears that under the current circumstances, their contribution is headed towards zero. Today, despite serious challenges, they continue to struggle for the restoration of their human, human dignity and respect. The international community bears responsibilities to engage and prioritize female voices from inside the country and facilitate their participation in all deliberations concerning the country and their future. Because Afghans inside the country will ultimately bear the consequences of any decision taken regarding, regarding them. There is no doubt that change should, should be driven from inside the country. The Taliban regime has failed to earn recognition from any UN member state because of their rigid and intransigent mode of governance, their inability to transform their mindset on issues such as women freedom. Taliban government should understand that a country can't survive in the 21st century by pursuing a retrogressive and ultra-conservative approach. The eventual outcome of suppressing the freedom and creativity of women will be the erosion of Afghan society. Banning women's movements, curtailing all their freedom, health and education will augment frustration and anger among the Afghan women. In turn, the wrong message will be delivered to the world that the Afghan people are socially backward and can never live a normal life. Moving on, two prominent Khalistanis have died under suspicious conditions in a matter of few days. One in Pakistan, another in Canada. Hardeep Singh Nijar, the chief of Khalistan Tiger Force, was the latest to receive the bullet. Earlier, it was Aftar Singh Khanda, the chief of Khalistan Liberation Force. There are reports that the Khalistani camps, which have been flourishing on the finances provided by Pakistan, were rattled by the arrest of their India face Waris Punjab Day chief Amritpal Singh. Power vacuum at one front, personality clashes within groups and widening divisions among different leadership factions are being attributed for the implosion with the so-called Khalistan movement. A report. Hardeep Singh Nijjar, who was a designated terrorist under UAPA, Unlawful Activities Prevention Act, for his involvement in various terror activities in India, and who also had an Interpol red corner notice against his name, was recently found dead in Canada's Surrey under suspicious conditions. Several media reports suggest that the death of Avtar Singh Kanda had been engineered by Nijjar, who could not tolerate Kanda's prominence amongst pro-Khalistan factions. Pakistan, a nation known for its support of these groups, seeks to ensure that peace and serenity in India remains perpetually disrupted. In line with its sinister dual strategy, Pakistan on one hand sends drug shipments using drones that harm younger generations, while on other it extends financial and logistical support to organizations associated with Khalistan movement. Very simple, it is a Pakistan backed Pakistan sponsored movement. You do not speak against your paymasters. You do not speak against the people who are giving you safe haven even today. People who are active in the Khalistan movement in the 80s and the 90s are still being supported and sustained by Pakistan on Pakistani soil. 
they are still being supported and sustained in foreign locations by covert Pakistani assistance. So, if you begin to ask for Khalistan in Punjab, which is the heartland of Sikhism, then you will lose your uh, sponsor, you will uh, lose your principal paymaster. This is all about money, you must understand. You know, if you start looking at these activities, you will see that all these people are looking for two things, a certain prominence in the community and funding and they are both linked with, with prominence comes money, with money comes from prominence. India has been subjected to the disturbance caused by advocates of Khalistan's destructive ideology. In February of this year, Amrit Pal Singh, who proclaims himself as a leader of Khalistan, issued a demand for the release of his associate Lovepreet Singh, also known as Tufan Singh. Lovepreet had been detained on charges of kidnapping. A large group of Amritpal supporters subsequently launched an attack on the Ajnala police station near Amritsar, making use of the Guru Granth Sahib as a shield to ensure they couldn't be stopped without disrespecting the sacred scripture. Pakistan-backed Khalistanis have unleashed mayhem in countries where they have found relatively soft law enforcement agencies. They pull the Indian flag from the London Embassy in the name of protests. The entire flag takedown episode was the brainchild of Avtar Singh Kanda, who has also met his fate. The killing of these prominent Khalistanis is also an indication that these so-called Khalistani terrorists are primarily driven by the quest for power and there is no coherence or power structure in their system. All these incidents occur within that entire environment of what I call impunity. Local enforcement authorities do not take adequate measures knowing that there is risk of such action, knowing that there are risks of clashes of violence. And this is not the first time you have had violent or aggressive demonstrations around uh, the, the Indian High Commission or Indian embassies. And yet, no insufficient arrangements are made to prevent such actions. So, it is very clear if something like this happens and happens again and again, all right, this is the first time that the flag has really been uh, taken down, but violent incident, incidents, throwing of stones, breaking of windows, all these things have happened in uh, the High Commission in UK in the past. So, you know this trouble will occur and you fail to take uh, preventive action. The answer is very simple, the only people responsible then are the enforcement authorities and those, the political authorities who are uh, overseeing them. Now it is high time that the world leaders come together to address yet another conflict that has been harboured over time by Pakistan, solely to solve their own sinister motives. And the challenges faced by India must be considered as India has borne the major brunt of the Pak-sponsored Khalistan movement and has to face the consequences of yet another issue orchestrated by Pakistan to disrupt peace in the country. The Indian security forces foiled an infiltration attempt from Pakistan's side by killing five terrorists in Jammu and Kashmir. This attempt from Pakistan is yet another major attempt by infiltrators trying to cross the LOC untraced. In recent times, such infiltration attempts by India's desperate neighbour Pakistan have spiked in number, disturbing the peace and tranquility in Jammu and Kashmir. A report. The Kupwara district of Jammu and Kashmir became the ground of operations when the Indian Defence Forces foiled a major infiltration attempt from Pakistan recently. Under the operation, a total of five terrorists were killed trying to enter India untraced. At around midnight in the intervening night of 15th and 16th June 2023, movement of terrorists was picked up by the alert troops braving challenging terrain and weather conditions along the line of control uh, fence. The infiltrating terrorists 
were engaged with precise and accurate fire and in the ensuing firefight five unidentified terrorists were neutralized with no collateral damage just a day before this incident another infiltration attempt was stopped by india's valiant security forces in poonch district of the union territory this time seizing a cache of illegal weapons from the terrorists regardless of the ill intent of infiltrators counter terrorism operations have been able to subdue terrorism in jammu and kashmir several experts assess that counter terrorism operations have left anti social elements in jammu and kashmir feeling helpless in india as the logistical and financial support network faces crackdown from all sides Repeated attempts at destroying the peace of India by Pakistan is not a new phenomenon. India's Jammu and Kashmir face a continuous disregard of the ceasefire agreements from Pakistan. Regular intervention of drones that drop illegal weapons and drug packages on Indian soil. And allies of the enemy that work as a helping hand in terror financing shows the ill intentions of Pakistan here in India. The year-end review by the Ministry of Defence in 2022 pointed out that infiltrators and armed terrorists have been constructing tunnel networks across the border to ease smuggling of arms, ammunition and narcotics across the border. Adding to it are the infiltration attempts by terrorists to cross the border. Such interventions from Pakistan continue even when its economy is on a slippery slope. The country has merely weeks worth of forex reserves. Inflation is uncontrollable. Politics even after the change of many governments remain unstable and the army has created a system where it can take over the civilian government anytime if they wish to. This is when the general public has to struggle for gathering even basic resources for their survival. حکومتیں نال ہو چکے ہیں حکومت کر نہیں سکیں کیونکہ سیاسی بحران بھی ہیں اور معاشی بحران بھی ہیں اس وجہ سے لوڈ شیڈنگ گیس کی الگ ہے تو بجلی کی الگ ہے بل زیادہ بیچ دیتے ہیں اور بجلی ہوتی نہیں ہے اور لوڈ شیڈنگ اتنی زیادہ کر دیتے ہیں لوگ اور ہم سب لوگ پریشان ہیں کہ اس کے لیے کیا کرنا چاہیے گیس بند پڑا ہوا ارے بچی کا دلیا تک بھی نہیں بنا چھوٹی معصوم بچی کا ہمارا اب گیس کا کیا کرے یہی تو کہہ رہے سکون دے دو ہمیں گیس بھی دے دو بتی بھی دے دو To counter all attempts and to keep the peace intact in Jammu and Kashmir, India has a perfectly designed framework in place that works day and night in the pursuit of miscreants sent and supported by Pakistan, so that the humble and hardworking people of Jammu and Kashmir can carry on with their lives without any hindrance. Working on various levels, India's BSF shoots down drones which bring drug and ammo packages on the Indian soil and raids by NIA break the terror financing network which provides a financial framework to terrorists here in India. Furthermore, a deep-rooted Indian intelligence network provides information based on which police and army conducts ground counterterrorism operations that ensure the peace in the union territory even after pakistan's repeated nefarious attempts and with that we come to the end of this edition of news week south asia we'll be back next week with more news views and analysis from the subcontinent meanwhile do keep writing to us at nwsa@nin.com This is Shivangi Mishra signing off on the behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.